Hi, this is a video trip report for the Middle Fork of the Salmon launching June 7th, 2022. And the flow was about seven feet. Uh, these video trip reports are something I just do where I take video on the trip. I, I share my thoughts uh, about it while the video happens. And I'm just gonna show the major rapids and just my opinions uh, and the lines that I take and some thoughts that I have to share. There are other ways to run the river. I might be wrong. This is just my thoughts. If you like it, awesome. If you don't, turn the audio off or just stop it all, all together. But hopefully this video can help you if you're planning a high water trip just to get a sense of what the river is like and just some verbal beta. So the, the river was six feet and rising and, I, and six feet is a good high water level. Uh, for me, if it's rising, I'm uncomfortable with the first 25 miles. So we chose to fly everything in. This trip launched to Indian Creek. We're on our first day right now. We didn't even mess with Boundary Indian. For me, that was a choice we made because of high water, the rivers rising, the guides that we had, and the guests that we had. And so, uh, we, we again, we, this is our first day. And Ski Jump here is one of the biggest rapids on the Middle Fork of High Water. And it, it gets it catches people off guard because at low water, it's not a big deal. But at high water, it's certainly a big deal. You can see I did a downstream ferry in the entrance, which got me pretty far right. And if you do that, it's pretty straightforward. But if you accidentally or even purposefully go in the middle, there's been a lot of people that have flipped there. It's caused injuries. This is a known problematic rapid at a high flow. So we had actually eddied out of marble and walked like whatever it is, half a mile down to scout this. That's how seriously I take it. This, we took our time, we scattered it, and we took really conservative lines by going right. And the first day, there's not many other kind of rapids in note. Uh, the next day, the Tappan series are kind of the big ones. And you can see here, Tappan 1 is pretty washed out. It's just big waves, not even that big of waves, just fun waves. And the key is you kind of want to end up on the left down here. So not, not, not that big of a rapid to think about, but you know, a swim here would be bad because you swim and then go right into Tappan Falls, which is also pretty big. We'll see downstream. You'll also notice, notice I'm using paddlers in my boat. Even though it's a gear boat, those paddlers do make a difference. Here's Tappan Falls, comes right after Tappan 1. Um, it's pretty washed out as well at these higher levels. And so it's just kind of like stay right and go through this wave train. Really fun, um, not too difficult, um, but again, having there are places here you could flip, especially in smaller boats or have a problem. This is a big 18 foot gear boat, so it kind of powers these waves pretty easy and it's pretty heavy. We're like a smaller 14 or a light boat could maybe have a problem on these waves, but these big boats kind of eat it up. Soon after that is Tappan 2, which is not, you know, it, it got covered up by the Cove Creek landslide, which dammed the water back up a bit. So Tappan 2 isn't as long as it used to be, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. You can see, same thing. This is going to be the, the theme of the entire video, is things are generally washed out, but swimming would maybe be really bad. <laughs> like, swimming some of this stuff wouldn't be pleasant. And just below Tappan 2... Uh, we eddied out here just to kind of boat scout and just kind of get our boat spacing back. And once I felt good about the boat spacing, just kind of slid down the bottom of the eddy. And it was a pretty straightforward run down the left side here. And there were some more fun rapids, but the next rapid of note is Apareo. Uh, again, like same as usual, washed out waves. There's some places you get in trouble, but generally down the middle worked pretty well for us this day. Uh, we camped the trail just downstream of Apareo, and the next rapid just past the Flying B is Haystack. 
this can be a pretty decently sized rapid. Uh, my note said at high water, you can go right or you can go left. I started right, but didn't like how it looked downstream. So I decided to do a big downstream ferry and go right to left. And this was a little bit of a risky move because I'm we're exposed to some rocks down there. Kind of had to make this ferry all the way across. I just didn't like the way the right side looked. Uh, one of our boats did go right and it was great. Uh, so I'm pretty sure at high levels, right's fine, left's fine. This big ferry, this big downstream ferry across the river uh, worked well too. It's pretty easy to boat scout and pretty wide open. Right after Haystack is Bernard. And, you know, usually this is two distinct rapids, but at high water, it's just kind of one going back to back. And I'm just kind of getting some position here. And again, this was just a down the middle sort of affair, not a big deal. So although these rapids are pretty straightforward when they're washed out, flipping here would be pretty bad. And you can see I just passed a wave that could flip a smaller boat. I could even flip a big boat. That whole wave, the whole thing I'm passing now could probably flip something. And if this isn't pull drop. Like the river keeps moving. So if I was to flip this boat, getting it to shore would be incredibly difficult and take a team of people who know what they're doing to even get it to shore and then flip it. And some of the flips would have to happen midstream like without getting ashore, just people jumping on and flipping it over, which would be hard. And so um, a consequence of, of a consequence of a flip could be really bad. Uh, the next rapid of note is Earthquake Rock. You'll see that the rock is just completely covered up. It's washed out. Although I'm, I'm working hard to get left. Uh, I don't know if I even needed to. I just was taking a very conservative line. And, you know, this is basically like down. Maybe I did need to get left. Why am I working so hard? I'm not sure. Maybe, oh, to miss that little wave thing, which I probably could have gone through. Uh, but again, being very conservative, I don't want to have a swimmer. If I have a swimmer in the, as lead boat, I don't really have a good way to rescue them. They could just take off, especially in this canyon. It's just pretty nonstop. And it's not that hard, but there were a few places where the eddies were surgy. There were some waves breaking weird, so I'm just taking very conservative lines. Uh, but again, this Jack Creek Canyon, not a huge deal. Uh, but fun, really fun. And of course, like it's the metaphor, really beautiful too. So we can't survey and stopped at Vale Falls, hiked up there. And the next kind of rapid of note here is Wall Creek Rapid. I call it Porcupine, I think that's what people used to call it. Uh, but I think more people now call it Wall Creek Rapid. And there's a nice wave train here and you don't want to end up against the right wall. So I'm gonna, again, I'm always being super conservative, especially at, you know, big water, especially in the lead boat. Just trying to miss everything by downstream ferrying to get through some laterals here early on. And just take and kind of ride and kind of power through that lateral and now i just want to kind of get on an eddy line and get away from the waves just to be very conservative and take my time i know some of you are like hit the waves good in the middle awesome um you can do that but i'm just very into like let's not have a swimmer a swimmer here could be really hard to recover and a flip would be brutal because the water as you can see just moves really continuously down here and just downstream here I don't know, I'm getting to it here soon. I fast forwarded through it because it's a beautiful part. I want to show this video. But right here somewhere is a rapid I call surprise. Other people call it, I think, goal posts. It's where you kind of go through like a little couple goal posts and there's a big surprise wave. Um, we just passed it. But this is such a stunning part of the canyon. This is my favorite part. So I really I wanted to put this video up. Um, but normally this is wave trains and exciting. And this is just moving water at these higher flows. One thing to note here is we've passed Big Creek and we're now in the Impassable Canyon. And on this trip, Big Creek was pumping. And so this lower end, based on how big Big Creek is and what I've seen before it, similar six feet flows, 
This to me feels more like seven, seven and a half feet, maybe higher. And so the lower end to me was really big compared to other times I've been on the river at these higher flows. So uh, not, even though it's the river is six feet at Middle Fork Lodge, it can act much differently down here. And you'll see stuff is washed out. This is red side. You know, it's big holes in the middle. Those are typically even rocks. At, like I've seen at six feet, I've seen rocks in the middle there popping up. So they're all covered. But that right side sneak works really well. The key here is knowing where red side is and making sure you get right. Because if you're not coming into it uh, on the right side, it's going to be really hard to get back right. So knowing where you are on the river, I think, is sort of crucial for running red side well. If you, again, if you come around that corner and try to get right, you might really struggle. And again, a flip there could be pretty nasty because you'll see the water just kind of moves down this canyon. It would be very difficult to get a flip boat to shore. Not impossible, just very difficult. And the Weber comes up here, and so you'd have a hard time getting it back before Weber. And at this flow, uh, Weber is just kind of a big wave hole there on the right of the top and one on the left at the bottom. So you kind of got to thread the needle between the two. I caught a piece of the top one, and I'm going to catch a piece of the bottom one. Um, I would just say, like, the line at this flow is generally down the middle, but trying to not go into those holes, basically. And the old timers call this rapid corkscrew. I think I understand why, but that's just another name for red side, especially a high water. That's a, that's a name they call it a high water. There's mist falls on the right. And then we're headed down to the mist falls rapid, which is again, around a bend comes up quick, but pretty much just washed out. Not a big deal. There's that, you know, there's that hole there on the right. You would definitely want to avoid but uh, pretty washed out. So this is upper cliffside, looks radically different on high water. It's really easy just to stay right heading into it. We're camped here. This is cradle camp as well. So we're going to catch this eddy at the bottom. And here we are catching the eddy. We're camped at Cradle. You'll see it's just tricky. We took our time. Uh, I think that catching eddies and leaving eddies is one of the hardest parts of high water boating on the Middle Fork. And it went pretty well. Took our time. And here we are leaving the next morning. And leaving the eddy is key. And it's not just leaving the eddy by yourself, but leaving as a team. Like I'm checking to make sure everybody's ready so the boats are ready to follow right behind me when I come out. And even though I got a little bit ahead of them, uh, we're, if, it's fine because I'm going to slow down, pull on the oars, let them catch up before entering lower cliffside. Lower cliffside is big and you really have to get left and it's not super easy to get left. You can see there's some big waves and holes in the middle. I had to go, like kind of saw it a minute ago. I had to kind of go around a little wave hole thing in the entrance. Uh, but the key to lower cliffside at pretty much all flows is get left. Going down the middle can be pretty nasty. Next up it was rubber, which was really big. These waves are really, really big, but I didn't personally think that hard. It wasn't a flippy level. It could flip a boat, it easily flip a boat, but uh, it, it's harder at lower levels. I'm just somewhere in the fives, it gets flippier, but these higher flows is pretty washed out and it's pretty much just a big fun wave train. And the waves were big. It, the waves are bigger than they look in the GoPro. Uh, the GoPro. I watched the GoPro afterwards and I was like, ah, oh, that's not that exciting. But when we were in it, these waves felt super massive.
After that's Hancock. This is probably my personal favorite rap, but it's one that nobody really mentions. It's just really fun. And the entrance at these higher flows has a nice wave train. And I'm going to usually try to like get left of that wave train. So I'm going to choose to do it by a downstream ferry. Just kind of come in with some right to left momentum, break through these laterals with the downstream ferry, and then just ride the left side of this of these waves. I have seen a gear boat almost flip in these waves before, so I have a, a bit of respect for them. Um, probably not at this level, because again, it's a little washed out, but it's possible. Um, so I'm gonna be really careful here. Kind of powered through these lateral waves, got to the left, and it was a, and now I'm able to just kind of like be left of that wave train and then kind of pick where we wanted to go. We could really go anywhere at this level. Everything's covered up. This is just good, clean fun. Low here, the next thing of note is Devil's Tooth. And actually, this isn't anything of note. It is completely washed out. I, I can't remember exactly where Devil's Tooth is from the videos, uh, but we're basically in a now. It's just covered up, hard to tell where it even is. Uh, and you can see House of Rocks is just downstream. So I'm guessing like right here maybe is where Devil's Tooth is. But it's interesting how washed out some of these rapids really get. And my notes said a house of rocks to go left to high water but left had some nasty holes and there was a great line down the middle so maybe at lower levels go left i'm not sure but it's pretty boat scattable um it's pretty easy to make good decisions here and again like all these rapids pretty washed out Here we are at Clamshell Rock. For those of you that know this rock, this is like 10 plus feet out of the water normally, and that this flow is just being covered up. That's This is why I think the flow was like felt like seven and a half, eight on the lower end. Although the gauge said six feet because Big Creek was so big and the tributaries were so big, I feel like this is bigger than a normal six feet. So hopefully that helps you gauge what's going on. But the key to Clamshell Rock at high flow is just don't go where it is. Go left, go right. Just avoid it because it's really boily water. You could flip a boat in there and get in some trouble. Um, yeah, it's, it's a weird spot. And here we are coming down the last little bit of the middle fork, seeing the main salmon. And we're about to turn the corner onto the main salmon and go to take out. Uh, some quick advice I would have for everybody wanting to run the river at high level. First of all, uh, you saw me do it a lot. Don't. I wouldn't suggest ferrying. I would get 90 degrees of the current and pull to shore if you need to make a move or do a downstream ferry, pull downstream at an angle to break through laterals. And the other thing is take it seriously. Even though the rapids don't look that hard, things are washed out, things can get out of control really fast. Like if there's some sort of flip or swim or something happens, it's really hard to recover because things are moving so quickly that it's really hard to, to solve problems. And so you wanna be really conservative and you want to be with a solid team of people that can solve problems. That means they're athletic. That means they're great on the water. That means they have some rescue skills. And when I say rescue skills, I don't mean Z drags because it's almost useless at high water. I mean, able to flip boats, 
set safety, run tight together, leave eddies together. I think those are critical skills because although it's not that, that hard, uh, mistakes will compound very quickly and cause problems. So those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed it. Those of you that have experience and want to add more comments, please do put that in the comments section below. If you have questions, ask them down in the comments section below as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.